Okay, let's find the slope of a line that runs through these two points. So this type of problem is very fundamental in algebra and beyond. You absolutely need to know how to calculate the slope. So if you're struggling with it, don't, you know, don't worry, you know, well, don't beat yourself up. You certainly have to worry about it, but a lot of students struggle uh, with calculating the slope initially. But the difference is, is, hey, are you going to understand your mistakes and correct, you know, any, you know, misunderstanding about that? So the whole point of this video is to calculate the slope and emphasize the correct procedure and formula and to um, really highlight common mistakes that students make. So we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've constructed several full and complete comprehensive online math courses. So if you want to check out my math help program and my courses, you can find a link to that in the description of this video. Also, if you're in uh, need of some uh, math notes, okay, maybe your notes aren't as strong as you'd like them to be, you can find uh, some uh, various math notes in the description or beneath this video. So pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, trig. Of course, you need to really work on your note taking. But if you, you know, need a good strong reference, you know, I have some notes uh, there that you might want to check out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem calculating the slope. Now, the first thing is, let's just do a quick review on what we're talking about here. So I'm just going to sketch this out real fast. The whole idea here, here's X, here's Y. If I was to plot this point 3, 2, it might be like right here, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So here's the point 3, 2. Now, negative 1, 6 would be like right here, negative 1. And then 6 would be like way up here, right? So I have a line that's going through those two points. All right, I could do a little bit better than that. Let me see here, something like that, right? So there's a line that passes through the point uh, three, two, and negative one, six. So I have a line that's going through it. So obviously that line has some sort of slope. I mean, we indicate slope by M because you know we like to use that slope intercept form. So Y equals MX plus B. So that little small M, is our handy dandy variable to represent uh, the slope of a line. Now, when a line is falling from left to right, kind of going downhill, the slope is gonna be negative. Okay, so I'm anticipating a negative value here, right? Some sort of negative uh, number, likely a fraction. Now, if I had a line going in this direction, the slope would be what? Of course, it would be positive. So lines increasing from left to right, it's gonna be a positive value slope. Lines falling is going to be negative value. Uh, how about a perfectly horizontal line? What would be the slope there? Well, you guessed it. It would be zero. There is no slope. It's flat, right? It has no angle, no steepness to it. And then a perfectly vertical line. How steep is that? What kind of angle does that have? Or what's, what's the slope of this line? Well, we call this undefined. Okay, in mathematics, uh, we're not able to define uh, vertical slope. So you need to really understand slope. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on the mechanics of just calculating the slope, but this is just a quick overview of what we're doing. So uh, by looking at this, okay, the nature of this problem, the question would be, you know, find the slope of a line that passes through these two points. If I was to plot these two points, I could just kind of sketch it out and I can estimate the slope of a graph paper. Okay, I could probably get pretty close to it, but at least we know it should be negative. All right, so with that being said, Let's get into the actual mechanics of finding the slope. And in math, you're uh, you know taught many formulas. The formula for the slope is m is equal to y2 minus y1. There's different variations of this, x2 minus uh, x1. But it's going to be your y's in the numerator and the x's and the denominator. So if your uh, what you're learning is a little bit different, don't worry about it. But basically, it's uh, the rise. This means the rise over the run. I'm not going to turn this into a full lesson on the concept of the slope. Uh, I really want to stick to just calculating it. But just make sure one thing that your y's, okay, these y's here are in the numerator, okay, and the x's in the denominator. Now another way we can express the slope. It's a little bit fancier way of doing it, uh, especially for more advanced mathematics, but let me go ahead and you can handle it. There's this little triangle 
symbol like this. Uh, this is re referred to as delta, which means uh, difference or change. So it's uh, we can write the slope as the change in y's over the change of x's. Okay, so that's a real kind of fancy way of writing a slope. Just a lot of different ways you kind of express it. Make sure you get your y's in the numerator and your x's in the denominator. That's the first uh, thing. I did a, a video not too long ago on uh, uh, mistakes with uh, slope. Okay, I really need to link it to this video where uh, the common errors with it. But a lot, one of the common errors, super common mistakes that uh, students make is they put their x's in the numerator and a y's down here in the denominator. So obviously you're going to get the problem wrong if that's the case. So you, gotta need to, you need to know the formula, right? Okay, now, so this is our formula. Let's kind of scoot this over here. All right, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be subtracting the y's and then uh, we're going to be subtracting the x's in the denominator. Subtracting the y's, we're going to find the differences of the y's in the numerator and the differences of the x in the denominator, and then we're going to simplify. So where are the y's? Well, these guys here are our y's, okay? So remember, a coordinate, a point, is x, y. It's an ordered pair. It's a pair of, of numbers or values that have a particular order to it. So this is referred to as an ordered pair or a point or a coordinate. They're all uh, synonymous with one another. But these guys here are, are y values, okay? They're in the y position, okay? So let's go ahead and subtract the, the, the two y values, okay? We were given two y values. Let's go ahead and subtract them. So we'll start with two. We'll say, okay, two minus six, right? Two minus six, guess what? That's perfectly fine, yay, we're almost there. Two minus six, we just found the differences of the y. So we did this part of the formula. Okay, now here is where students uh, make a big, big error, all right? So now, we have to find the differences of the x's, okay? So we have to subtract the x values. And so where are the x values? Well, three and negative one are our x values. So let's go ahead and subtract the x values. Now the question is, should I go hmm, three minus a minus one? Okay, should I go with this three minus a minus one? Or maybe I can write it this way, uh, negative one minus three, okay? Does it make a difference if I write it Here's my two x values. If I subtract them this way, negative 1 minus 3, or if I do the reverse, okay, I'm still just focusing on the x's, 3 minus a minus 1. Okay, does it make a difference? Yes, absolutely. It absolutely makes a difference. Okay, do not make this error. So because I started with 2, okay, over here in this calculation for my y's, I must start with this respective um uh, value for x, 3, okay? So if I start with this coordinates information first, so I started with a 2 here, I got to start with a 3 down in the denominator. So that means I'm going to have to do this 3 minus, now I threw this little negative value in because it's this is another error that students make. So it's 3 minus, not just 3 minus 1, it's 3 minus a minus 1 or a negative 1, okay? All right, so if you're with me so far and you understand everything, then you're going to be good to go. So now at this point, all we have to do is simplify this out. So I have 2 minus 6. Be careful, right? This is going to be negative 4. And then 3 minus a minus 1 is the same thing as what? 3 plus 1. So I'm assuming you know your, you know, well, integer values and fractions and everything else, right? So 2 minus 6, again, is the same thing as 2 plus a negative 6, which, of course, is negative 4. And 3 minus a negative 1 is the same thing as 3 plus 1. So I end up with negative 4 over 3 plus 1 is 4, and negative 4 over a positive 4, you guessed it, is a negative 1. So the slope turned out to be m is equal to negative 1. Remember I said that this was going to be a negative value just based upon how the coordinates uh, look, but this is how we calculate the slope for this particular problem, okay? So again, remember, you know, you got to know uh, your formulas. Uh, there's a lot of formulas, again, you're going to learn in mathematics. Some, some of them you really, really need to commit to your long-term memory. And like, in other words, not have to look up, you know, or try to go look, you know, go to your notes or whatnot. Some of the stuff you just need to know cold, like you got to just, you know, know it. Okay. Finding the, the slope, uh, formula is one of them. <laughs> you got to know that. Okay. So that's number one. Number two, 
Um, and you obviously don't want to confuse where the X and Ys go. Uh, the second thing is you need to know that order makes a difference when you're plugging in these values. Absolutely. Okay. And the third thing is you need to be able to um, confidently simplify the arithmetic here to get your actual final value. But if you're able to do this problem, if you kind of just kind of challenge yourself and said, okay, let me do this problem before he does it and you got the right answer and you understood why you got the right answer, then that's excellent. Okay. So, you know, here, let's just give you a smiley face and a few stars. I remember back in the first grade, that was a long, 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 long time ago, but you know, it's always exciting to get those little kudos. Hey, great job. Um, but if you didn't do well, Guess what? You're, you're and you're with me with this video through this video at this point of it. You definitely learned something, okay? And who knows if you're watching this? I'm assuming you're learning slope, and maybe you're going to be coming up on some pop quiz or test or whatnot. Take it serious because there's no escaping the slope, all right? Uh, it's going to be chasing you through your mathematics uh, uh, adventures here, okay? So learn it, do the right thing. It's not that difficult, but then you got to practice it. Okay, so um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider smashing that like button. Also, if you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, please consider subscribing. I'm posting new math stuff all the time. And um, again, I have already hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel at, uh, you know, feel free. They're there for you to use. But if you really want to get into my full, complete math instruction, my best work, then you want to check out my math help program. And again, if you need uh, some better reference notes, you can find those, all this stuff in the description of this video. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.